Welcome back Amiibos and Amigals to a brand new custom Amiibo tutorial. Yes, I know I already have a Bowsette custom Amiibo tutorial on my channel right now. However, I was actually going to make a much more detailed version and you guys swamped me with a ton of comments. So I decided let's do it, let's get this expedited, and I hope you guys enjoy this brand new Bowsette Custom Amiibo. So I do apologize beforehand, it is still PG-13, don't get me wrong, but it's much harder to make. So if you aren't used to making custom Amiibo, make sure you check out the first tutorial that I made that is very, very simple so that anyone can make their own. Let me know in the comments below if I should make another Peachette Amiibo down below in the comments. Either Boo, Shy Guy, let me know. I might make it in the next video and feature your comment as well. Keep in mind, all the materials used in this video will be down below in the description with the Amazon link. All you have to do is click the link, put it in your cart, and then check out. Of course, if you're using any dangerous tools in this video, please be very careful. If you aren't of age, definitely ask your parent or an older sibling to help you out. All right, so I am totally open to criticism, especially when it's positive criticism. Keep in mind, this version of Bowsette is really my interpretation. There is a ton of fan art out there for Bowsette, so it is really up to you. I love making DIYs so that you can put your own spin. You can have her with red hair, you can have her with a fireball. I make DIYs for you guys so you can be creative and make your very own one-of-a-kind custom amiibo. Alright, so let's get started. Enough chit-chat. When it comes to making any custom amiibo, you have to start removing whatever you don't need. So yes, at times you will need the X-Acto, or sometimes you just use a heat gun to remove some parts. However, I get it, if you just want to jump in, go ahead and rip it apart, be very careful, and be aware of what you'll need and what you'll have to remove. Once you're done removing all the parts that you don't need, it's time to refine those parts. And what I mean by refining those parts is basically making sure that it fits within your design. Add or remove anything that you don't need from the arms, legs, body, face, etc. The tool that I use the most is actually the X-Acto knife. And again, it is so dangerous. I've cut myself and injured my fingers so many times. So please be very, very careful with this tool. It is super sharp. So ask a parent or your older sibling to help you out. What I like to do is actually take the parts and see if it fits or if it's too big or too small. You wanna make sure that the proportions actually fit well with the custom Amiibo. So double check from time to time. Please be very patient and have fun with it. Make sure if you work on one arm, you have to work on the other and make sure that they're not too big or too small from each other. So this is practically what it should look like once you're done with the arms. If you happen to cut too deep with the X-Acto, if it doesn't look right, you can always add clay to fix it, so don't worry. Alright, so in a lot of Bowsette reference pictures and fan art, she actually has a ponytail. However, again, this is totally up to you, but I decided to go with that route, so we need to cut off a majority of her hair. <laughs> If you're not confident or if you're too hesitant to cut off a lot of it all at once, don't worry. You can do it little by little and I prefer it that way just because you don't want to mess up the head. Once you cut into the head or you cut something off, it's going to be really hard to fix it. Once you are completely done removing anything that you don't need, it's time to add things that you actually need. Once again, all the materials will be down below in the description, so definitely check out the links in the description, guys. It is there for you. The clay that I use is a two-part resin, especially when it comes to hardening and making sure that it's very, very durable. So this clay, I absolutely love. Again, it dries like cement, so you know it'll actually adhere to the surface. You don't have to do this part. Here I'm actually adding clay to her chest to make it a little bigger and of course it is totally up to you. I believe that your body is amazing regardless of the size or how skinny or how small or whatever you look like. Everyone's human. You are beautiful inside and out and of course let's be adults here. <laughs> 
So the cool part about this clay is that you can smooth a surface simply by using water and it is so malleable and you can basically do whatever you want. It's just really hard to work with when you want to keep it a specific shape because it takes about two hours for it to dry, 24 hours for it to cure. So once you're done adding the parts that you need, especially of course the clay that's in the crown, I decided to use a small bead and place it in the middle of her chest. So that's a placement for the actual blue gem that I'll be using later on. Depending on what I'm making, I will switch over to Super Sculpey because with Super Sculpey, you don't have to wait 24 hours for it to cure and you actually just have to heat it up in order for it to harden. You can make practically anything. It works best when you're making separate parts and then having to glue them afterwards or later. So that way, once again, you're not waiting for it to cure and it's very immediate and it's easy to work with. Right now I'm making the ponytail and it's very simple to make that. You're basically making spikes, making them elongated and then putting them together. The best tool in my opinion are your fingers, your fingernails. They can smooth just about anything. However, if you're not comfortable, I will list tools down below in the description that you can use. So make several spikes for the ponytail. Make it as thick as possible, but make sure it goes to a thin point where you're gonna attach it to the head. Once you're done with the ponytail, it's time to move on to the horns. Those are very easy to make. You're basically making those elongated spikes once again. Make sure that they are the same length, thickness, and size. You don't wanna make them uh, different from each other. They have to be very symmetric. So take your time with this. Make sure that they are proportional to the head. I decided to go with something bigger just because I feel like it's a lot cooler. I didn't want something like small or like little dinky. So I decided to go with really crazy horns. Moving on, it's time to make the tail. And once again, we're making a very elongated spike. This time, keep in mind, it's the tail. So it's a lot thicker, although you want it to not be too thin. You will notice in a lot of my custom Amiibo tutorials that I like to switch from one clay to the other because again, they have different highs and lows. So I went back to the Aves two part resin and decided to make the spikes out of that. When it comes to certain clays, there are so many polymers and so many different types. It really comes down to preference. So I'll list all those materials down below in the description. Once you have all your parts and they've hardened or cured, it's time to add them to the main base. So what I like to use, of course, is super glue. I love Loctite, or you can use Gorilla Glue. It's up to you. Whatever you use, make sure that you add generously and of course, apply pressure until it is securely onto the base. If you're following this tutorial to the exact T, this is what it should look like. I knew that once I started with the Super Smash Bros version of Peach, I had to go very detailed with this Bowsette. So of course you don't have to do that. I have a very simple Bowsette tutorial on my channel right now. So make sure you check that out if you're not comfortable making something as complicated as this. Double check your reference pictures. Make sure you've added all the details. And when you are ready, it is time to do the final step which is my favorite part, we are going to paint her. The paint that I've always used since customizing Amiibo has been Vallejo. They are specifically made for modeled figurines like D&D or anything that is like board games. So I highly recommend them. I will again list those down below in the description or other options for you, but I've had nothing but great, amazing results with Vallejo. Painting overall, it doesn't happen overnight. You definitely have to continuously practice. I do suggest, however, that you can start off with a primer and then add your base colors. For me, it's gonna be the darkest shade of that base color and then work your way up to adding highlights, to shading, to the small details. Just please take your time and have fun with this. If you mess up, don't worry. You can always go back and paint it over. Make sure that you add enough layers. And when you're adding layers, please wait for each layer to dry. Don't try to stack them up immediately. It's not gonna look good and you're gonna end up with a lot of brush strokes on the surface. 
If you happen to like this video so far, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, including the bell. As an artist, I really do appreciate it, and it gets us going to above and beyond. So once again, please like and subscribe to this channel. Become an Amiibo today. Check out all the nerd DIYs, all the tutorials. If you try any of them out, send me pictures and I will feature them in the next video, even on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes, I have all those social medias and they will be linked down below in the description. I even have a Patreon where you can get a custom amiibo, prints, Polaroids, etc. It supports me as an artist and you get really cool swag. So definitely check out all the links down below. This Bowsette was definitely all interpretational. There is a ton of references and fan art that you can go off of, but I love to see your uniqueness. So again, if you try out any custom Amiibo nerd DIY, definitely show me, send me pictures. I would love to see how creative you guys can get. One thing that I love to do with custom Amiibos is add materials that are out there. I decided to use a blue gem, lace, you can use ribbon, you can use um, Swarovski crystals, it's totally up to you, which I've done before. Really expensive. It's my favorite part of making custom amiibos, is really just adding those things that no one would ever think of. So definitely look around your house, try to picture what it would look like onto the amiibo, and just super glue it on there. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I do appreciate every single one of you guys. I am so glad you guys enjoyed the last Bowsette tutorial, which again is much easier than this one. So check it out if you're a beginner. Let me know what you guys think of Bowsette. And if there's any custom amiibo out there that I should make, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys. And if you have subscribed, I will definitely see you next time.